hospital and we have Vilika Port Potro. So those are the places I wanted to share with, uh, with the participants where someone can go and really get services for natural So I would like to begin my presentation by talking about the Menesco cycle. And I would like to say that um, this is very, very important for someone to understand their body very, very well. Because the, the Menesco cycle, especially we shall talk about a female, someone is, who is a, a female, and we say that once this is understood very, very well, it can help someone to do clear observation. Here. So the knowledge of the female body, signs of fertility, they provide a firm background in understanding how the different natural family planning methods do work. Now, menstrual cycle could refer to events of change in a woman is reproductive, a woman in a woman of reproductive age from the month of her puberty. To menstrual. These changes occur between the first day of the menstruation to the day of the next menstruation. I would like to say that these events may include blood, sick mucus, slippery mucus, and other types of sensation. The occurrences of these changes, they depend on the hormone. The importance of this, like as I said, that uh, we should understand that when it came to when it came to the to the male, they are kind of fertile from puberty mm -hmm. onwards. But when I'm talking about and uh, and their sperm can live for three to five days after it has been deposited in the female tract. For the female, it frustrates and uh, the, the ovum can only live for twelve to twenty four hours. There will be more explanation. In Onto this, when we begin the actual understanding of the of the different parts of uh, of the different types of natural family planning, if you can see me very well, I have this kind of picture, and I can say that this is this is the ovary. This is where we do. This is the part that the eggs comes from, and when an egg is released, at what we shall call, I mean, the next presenters will talk about the peak days. They'll call about the talk about the ovulation. So this is where the egg leaves the, uh, the ovaries and it goes into the fallopian tube. Now, the fallopian tube would be the, uh, the area for fertilization. And uh, when this area takes place, it's supposed and it goes to the, to what we shall call the womb, the uterus. This is where the fertilized egg goes. Now, if the egg reaches the uterus, when it has not been fertilized, it and that womb, the, the nest that has been prepared to hold the, 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 the growing pregnancy, eh? it will get out in what we shall understand as what as the menstruation. Brother Julius. Would you consider changing your presentation? It seems you're using a different slide from what you're presenting.
Yes, somebody had unmuted me. Thank you. I now I can get you. So, as I was going ahead with the presentation, I said it's nice to understand how the body works with, and this was kind of a small. But I understand that um, we shall get more when we begin on the actual methods of natural family planning. I'm just looking for Dr. Sandra. Dr. Sandra, where are you? Um, can someone unmute Dr. Sandra? Dr. Sandra Nabachua, can someone unmute Dr. Sandra Nabachua? Brother Julius, you're the host. Brother Julius. Yes, okay. Are you? Okay, I'm getting you. So I would like to introduce to you Dr. Sandra Nabachua. She's going to take us into our next presentation. Dr. Sandra Nabachua is going to take us through the two days method and, um, and the open communication, how we can communicate as partners very well about this. Now, Dr. Sandra Nabachua is the right person to take us through this. She's a medical doctor and a public health specialist in Uganda. She's the director at Uganda Matters Pro Life since 2008. Since 2008, this ministry was founded by the late Archbishop Charles Chizito Sepirian Ranga. Dr. Nabachua has helped to begin over 44 pro life youth movements around the Kampala Archdiocese. Herself is a trainer in fertility awareness and she works at Sharom Doctors Clinic, the one I shared about, and uh, she is married and a family lady. Dr. Nabashua, you are welcome. Thank you, brother. Um, can you allow me to share screen share? Share screen. Is that, is that okay? No, I'm seeing that um, disabled. You are disabled. I'm sharing screen. Okay. Have to say. Okay. okay. But today's technology has been difficult. Um, I'm trying to share the screen, the, the slides, but I don't know.
okay. Is now okay? Your screen sharing is paused, right? I'm seeing. Sorry? I don't know why it's paused. It's kind of dark at my side. Today's technology is not on our side. Uh, I don't know. Let me just uh, share. Let me just teach. Doctor, it had started sharing. Then, yes. So it is only taking longer to share. It could okay. be a connection issue, but you had succeeded in sharing. So just try again to do what you've just done recently. Okay. Okay, as we wait, we can still do something. Um, we are going to talk about the natural family planning method called the two game method. I hope it will finally share. My network is usually very, very good, but today I don't know what the problem is. Um, but anyway, there are principles of uh, natural family planning. And the first principle is identifying the fertile window. So it's very important to always identify the fertile window. And the fertile window are the days that uh, pregnancy can result. And then the second uh, principle is using one or more indicators to identify the beginning and the end of the fertile window. And then the third one is to avoid sex on the fertile days if you want to postpone a pregnancy. Oh my goodness, I don't know why it has completely refused. Maybe I just start afresh. I want to try again and see if I can uh, share. Hope this time it will work. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. There are many methods of uh, natural family planning. And uh, these include the modern methods. You know, people have many rumors about uh, natural family planning methods. And um, uh, many are not studied. Many people are just uh, creating certain uh, theories that you count four days and you count again four days, things like that. Uh, but there are methods of family planning which have been studied scientifically and proven to work. And these are the methods that we are going to be sharing in this series. And uh, unfortunately, for some reason, I am completely failing to share the slides, but we can still get the theory behind uh, these methods of family planning. Maybe another time when it works, we shall see the slides. We have the symptothermal method of uh, natural family planning, which uses cervical secretions and uh, temperature so the woman monitors her temperature and her cervical mucus every day to look out for signs of fertility. Then we have the Billings ovulation method, uh, which uh, 
another presenter is going to talk about this afternoon. And then we have the market model, uh, which uses uh, the um, hormones. A woman checks her hormones in the urine every day. I'm just going to try and... Uh, Seems doctor dropped off.
if you could go to share screen, then then see Dr. Sandra Nabachwa, and then you allow her to share. So the two-day method, sorry, this has been the first time that we get, I get such a difficulty with technology. I don't know why, but anyway, uh, the cervical mucus as an indicator of fertility. The woman checks daily for the secretions or absence of secretions of any type. For the two-day method, it's any type. For the Billings ovulation method, we are going to see the next presenter will tell you that you look at the consistency of the secretions. But when you use two-day method, it's any secretions which are healthy. And we are going to see uh, differentiate between healthy secretions and those <clears throat> which are not. Then um, in absence of secretions, we have to know that sperms die one to two hours in the acidic environment of the vagina. Presence of secretions keeps sperms alive for three to five days. So we are going to see that uh, the number of days of abstinence may be many because, brother, is still trying to help me share my screen? So what are the functions of the secretions? The functions of the secretions include protecting the sperm against the acidic environment of the, uh, the vagina. The woman's vagina is very acidic. So when the sperms are there, they protect uh, the sperm against the, uh, the uh, environment. And then, um, to, they also help to transport the sperm and then they are an energy source for the sperm. So presence of secretions therefore is a sign of the fertile phase of a woman. So uh, briefly, that's the background of the um, today method. So uh, what, how, do they, how does this method work? The first thing is to identify secretions. A woman identifies secretions every day in the afternoon and in the evening. She looks out for secretions. As we have said that uh, some days she has secretions, some days she doesn't have. Then after that, she records the secretions. Then or oh, she records what she has seen for that day. If she has seen blood, she records a full dot, which is a sign that she has seen blood. If she has not seen any secretions, then she puts a zero to show that she hasn't seen anything. No blood, no secretion. And if she has seen secretions, she writes an X. And this recording has to be done daily. And the woman records the most fertile sign of the day. Then the third step is to apply an algorithm of the two-day method. Um, how does the woman check for secretions? She can observe them when she goes for short call. Brother, have you completely failed sharing screen? Oh, it's very important to see the pictures. Maybe if in the end, somehow uh, the technology favors us, I'll just briefly show you some of the slides which are very important. But anyway, so the woman checks her secretions every day. Uh, maybe when she goes to the bathroom to, for short or long call, she will see secretions as she cleans herself. She can feel them with the, she can feel the secretions with her fingers, or she can sense them the way we sense when we are having our, our menstrual period. We, we can sense that now my period has come. So the longer the woman uses the um, two-day method, the more she can easily sense the secretions. Um, so um, after that, she applies the algorithm. And, the, and in this algorithm, the woman asks herself two questions. So every day she asks herself, did I not any secretions today? If the answer is yes, it means I can get pregnant today. 
did they not any secretions today? If the answer is no, I have to check. Remember we said that I have to note every single day what I have seen and I have to note the most fertile sign of the day. So if I saw secret, if I did not see secretions today, I ask myself, did I not any secretions yesterday? Oh, I'm now the host. Okay. But um, I'm, I've seen here in the chat that I'm the host, but when I try to share a screen, I'm still told host disabled participant sh screen sharing. So how is that? No, I'm not the host. Richard, you're the host. Can you allow me to share my slide, Richard? Sure, we need to look at the slides. I agree, Alex, but I don't know. <laughs> Some prayers out there. I don't know. We are really under attack. But we can win. Just go on, you will forward the, the notes to our emails. Okay, I'll forward the notes, it's true. Or maybe you can even, uh, at least you know the providers, uh, you will have known how to apply these methods so that at least you have an idea and you can, they've given you the list of providers. I hope that uh, brother can put them in the, in the chat so that people can know where to go for these services. So I'll go back to the algorithm. So did I not any secretions today? I ask myself, if I've seen secretions today, it means I can get pregnant today because I have, uh, I have seen secretions and we have already seen secretions as a sign of fertility. Then if I did not see secretions today, I ask myself, did I not any secretions yesterday? So if I noted secretions yesterday, it means I can get pregnant today. So in order for me not to get pregnant, I should not have seen secretions on two consecutive days. And that is what we call, that's why we call this method two day method. Doesn't mean that you abstain for two days. It doesn't mean that you, um, uh, you can only conceive for two days. It only means that you observe yourself for two days at a time. So every two days you have to check. If you're, you're not, uh, if you see secretions either today or yesterday, it means today you can get pregnant. So if a woman not secretions today and or yesterday, she's considered to be fertile today. So who can use the two day method? All women irrespective of their cycle length, whether they have irregular cycles or not, they can use the method. As you have seen, I've not talked about counting any days. So any woman can use the two-day method. And the women uh, who can use two-day method are the ones who have healthy secretions. What are healthy secretions? Healthy secretions are those secretions which do not itch, they do not smell, they do not stain your underwear. They just look like mucus. So if you have secretions that are smelling, that are itching, that are um, 
that are stain your underwear, they are green, yellow, you're sick, you need to see the doctor. And some of the women probably attending this session used to go to see health workers when they have healthy secretions. And maybe when you go to those who are not well experienced, they will still treat them. But healthy secretions are like mucus. So who else can use this method? Women who can check for secretions at least twice a day in the afternoon and in the evening. Why afternoon and evening? It's because the secretions flow by gravity. So by walking around and sitting, the secretions will come. So if you only check in the morning, it might be because you've not been up so the secretions have not flown by gravity. Then who else can use couples who can communicate well and manage their fertile days together? Um, so the woman, again, just for emphasis, will know that she is fertile and can become pregnant today if she had secretions today or yesterday. She is not fertile today if she did not have secretions either today or yesterday which is two days in a row. Also, she is not fertile today if she is menstruating. So just to note, no secretions for two consecutive days in the after, checked in the afternoon and in the evening. Um, deviations from the norm, uh, women should know that when they've recently given birth or are breastfeeding, they may, they may experience more days with secretions. And this method can be used by mothers who are still breastfeeding also. They are transitioning from the uh, breastfeeding method, lactation amenorrhea method. They should transition into the two-day method or Billings ovulation method um, for family planning. Women who recently used a hormonal contraceptive may also experience more or fewer days of secretions. Points to consider. You have to always know, how can I remember to check for secretions every day? Why is it important to check for secretions several times a day? We have known because the fertile sign may appear in the evening when you've already uh, had intercourse and then you would conceive because you are not patient. Then how can you remember to record each day? You have to plan as you start the method. And also you have to plan how to handle days of abstinence. Uh, there, there's one category of people who cannot use the two-day method. These are the women who have secretions every day. There are certain uh, women who have certain secretions every day. And I'm not talking about sweat because sometimes they ask me, how about if I sweat? No, we are talking about the mucus-like secretions. So for those who, who have secretions throughout their cycle, this should use the Billings ovulation method because for it, it talks about the consistency of the mucus. How effective is this two-day method? An efficacy trial found two-day method was more than 96% effective in preventing pregnancy with correct use. That means that out of 100 women using the method for one year, fewer than four of them would get pregnant if they used the two-day method correctly. Uh, there is no family planning method which is 100% effective. Even those whose tubes have been tied, they can still get pregnant, like one to 2%. Um, so any method which is above 95% effective is a good method for people to use for family planning. And the two-day method is more than 96% effective. But there are people who don't follow rules. If you don't follow the rules well, then you reduce the effectiveness of this method to 86%. Uh, please participants, remember that natural family planning methods depend totally on the user, you the user. So if you use it when you have not understood, then you will affect its effectiveness. So attending this class today doesn't mean you have completely understood so it is very important for you after getting this idea of checking the mucus and even the slides have let us down, but you have known there's a method of checking mucus, which is more than 96% effective. So you go to the, to the provider 
to get this method correctly so that you can use it well. It is not like the other ones where they just inject you or they just put something inside you. Natural family planning methods totally depend on the user. Let's talk briefly about communication, open communication and natural family planning. One of the keys to each couple's success in using natural family planning is effective communication. Lack of communication is one of the leading causes of marital breakdown. For the natural family planning using couple, communication is very, very essential. The natural family planning couple discovers, discusses whether or not they'll be avoiding or planning pregnancy. So one husband one time said, if you can talk about your wife's cervical mucus, you can discuss anything, which is true because that is very intimate and it is made, meant for the couple who have decided to live together and give each to the other completely. Husband and wife chat their wife's signs of fertility and infertility daily. Usually when I, I'm teaching natural family planning to a couple, I usually encourage the husband to be the one to chat. The woman finds the signs, then the husband chats so that they work together. Natural family planning works best when the couple together study and observe the woman's signs of fertility and infertility. Ideally, each month, the natural family planning couple discusses whether they will be avoiding a pregnancy or achieving a pregnancy. This is a day-to-day -day, uh, conversation for the couple. Both spouses are fully responsible and actively involved in planning for the family. Because natural family planning can be used both to achieve and to postpone or avoid pregnancy, it's a good idea to have this conversation every month. Even if the couple has decided that they will be avoiding pregnancy for a year or more, when internal shifts in emotional attitude are brought to the surface, the couple can unite in their efforts to carry out their plans regarding abstinence. So you pray every month and you say, Lord, do we want to have another child? Can we wait? It's not just saying, put this for this long. So just um, day by day, you discuss about your family. Maybe the issue that, that caused you to postpone the other month has gone away and this month you are open to having another child. When the natural family planning couple is discussing intimate topics such as mucus and other fertility signs, it enhances their marital and sexual life, thereby increasing intimacy. This sort of communication should also continue when the couple is postpartum, that is after having a baby, and even if they are in their menopause, even when the woman is in menopause. Natural family planning demands the kind of intimate and deep conversation that a married couple needs to embrace them to enhance their marriage. Perhaps this is why natural family planning couples have a lower divorce rate. A survey done in the US in 2000 showed divorce rate among natural family planning users was at 5% compared to 50% among contraceptive users. It's because as we said from the start, uh, natural family planning enhances communication and lack of communication is one of the hindrances to, to a happy marriage. Thank you very much for listening. Sorry about the slides, but at least you have got an idea that there are methods that work. So I'll hand over back to the host.
Brother Julius, we didn't hear anything you said. Oh, sorry. Are you getting me now? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. I would like to say thanks very much to Dr. Sandra Monica Nabachua for the presentation. Members will share their, their emails on our WhatsApp group and we make sure that the notes reaches them. We promise next weekend things will be quite more better than today. It's raining hard in Ginger, so I can't walk out to get a technician to help me. And um, I'd like now to say, let's go to our next present, presenter, who is Mrs. Emily. Can has someone help me to unmute Emily? Emily, are you getting me? Can someone help me to unmute Emily? She's signed in as Emily. Can Emily, are you hearing me? Can you unmute yourself? Okay, Mr. Raketo, can you become the host and unmute Emily? Hello. Okay, okay, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Yes, good evening, we are hearing you. Okay, I, I was getting worried. Thanks be to God that she's now fine. Okay, my name is Emile Iradukunda from Alliance for Rights International. Um, I want to talk about building preservation methods. Some of you may be knowing how it operates. Others, maybe it is your first time. 
but I want to assure you that it is the best method and it is so easy to learn. Uh, this Billings ovulation method was um, introduced by Dr. John Billings in 1953, having perceived the failures of the rhythm method. Yeah, of course, there were many other natural methods of family planning, but somehow they were having some shortcomings. And this Dr. John Billings discovered, decided to, uh, to look for a method which could work better during that time. So it took several years to come up with Billings ovulation method because they had to do um, several tests on different women over 85,000 women to confirm that the method was effective. Um, Dr. Billings discovered that the cervical mucus for 1,000 years was a significant indicator of fertility. So um, they had to, to carry out research on different women uh, having, okay, considering their cervical mucus, and they realized that um, the mucus, the existence of mucus is actually the fertility we are talking about. So where there is no mucus, there is no fertility. Somehow, Billings ovulation method has a connection to the two-day method that Dr. Sandra has been sharing. So there is, the, um, there is a small difference which we are going to look at. Um, first of all, Billings ovulation method works for all women. So long as this woman is in her reproductive age. Unlike the two-day method where I heard that there are some women who cannot use it, but for Billings ovulation method, it is unique because it can be used by any woman. Um, we are talking about cervical mucus because even if a woman ovulates without mucus, it cannot lead to conception. So we realize that mucus is essential for sperm survival. And you know where there is no sperm, of course there is no conception. So um, with Billings ovulation method, it works for all women with the different cycles. We know, we know that women are different. We have women with short cycles. When I talk about short cycles, what do I mean? Um, for example, a cycle begins with menstruation and ends with another menstruation. So uh, in, the, in the common or layman's language, people usually call it a, a month. Okay, but we call it a cycle in the medical term. So in this cycle, you can find a woman who is going into her period two times or after 20 days, she's again seeing her period. So that one is a short cycle. We have women with a cycle uh, this is a normal cycle. Most women have a normal cycle, whereby uh, you can find some, uh, okay, um, like from 26 to 32 days. Uh, there, you, that one is a normal cycle. Then we also have a long cycle. What does a long cycle mean? A woman can, can finish, um, like three months when she has not seen her period. That one is a long cycle. Conditions that bring long cycle, a, a breastfeeding woman can have a long cycle because it takes her time to see her periods. A woman who has just come off uh, the contraceptives, it also takes her time to, to see her menstruation. And then they, we also have a woman who is stressed. So yeah, when you experience stress, it, is, it happens and then you may not 
experience your period. Um, yeah, also premenopause women. Premenopause women also can experience long cycle. We also have a woman whose ovaries are not functioning well. Maybe they have uh, some underlying disease like polycystic ovarian syndrome and many others. So, but we are saying that with Billings ovulation method, whether you have a short cycle, whether you have a normal cycle, whether you have a long cycle, you can use Billings ovulation method. Uh, Billings ovulation method is certified by World Health Organization. It's not um, a briefcase method. It's a method which is recognized internationally. Uh -huh. Another thing, uh, what is key in Billings ovulation? You have to identify the sensation and appearance of cervical mucus. Some people, when they hear of this, so the cervical mucus, they tend to think that it is so hard to, to identify or to sense. But the question that I normally ask women is, when they go into their monthly periods, who tells them that they have joined? You just feel that something is coming out. And when you go to check, you find the blood have, having appeared. So the same applies to this cervical mucus. It is that easy. When you start using the Billings ovulation method, it becomes part and parcel of yourself. So as soon as anything comes, you feel it. So what is important is the sensation and what appears at the vulva. In fact, I want to make this clear that even blind women are using the Billings ovulation method successfully. So it doesn't matter what, what you see. What matters is what you sense. So if you start using the method, it becomes so easy because whenever something comes out of you, I mean, in the reproductive uh, area, the vagina, you feel something is coming out and then you can go ahead and record. So it's about recording. It's about recording what comes out is exactly what you put out on a chart. And unfortunately, I didn't prepare a PowerPoint, but even if I had prepared it, I can see the technology is down. So um, I think we shall be given the email addresses of the participants so that we can share the chats and, uh, and maybe other necessary material so that maybe you understand what I'm talking about. But a chat has, has uh, number of the number of uh, the days of the month and what is felt the discharge and then the symbol actually in building the relation method we use symbols and also description of symbols um, yeah so um, so I want to uh, to talk about the, the stages in a cycle. How do you know that, okay, the beginning of the cycle up to the end, that is a cycle. So we start with menstruation. Any cycle begins with menstruation. But before I go to that, I want to say that bearings is governed by rules. Just as you know that there is no government which operates without rules. So for buildings to operate or to go well, you have to follow some rules and they are, they are four. I'm going, I'll be talking about the rules as I talk about the stage. For example, I'm going to talk about menstruation. During menstruation, there is a rule that you follow. Whether you want to postpone pregnancy, whether you want to achieve pregnancy, or whether you want to, um, to monitor your reproductive system. Unlike other methods of natural family planning, Billings ovulation method not only helps in 
in helping a, a couple to achieve pregnancy. It also helps to postpone pregnancy and also monitor reproductive health. What do I mean by uh, monitoring reproductive health? Uh, women may be having um, some underlying diseases, but they may not know. For example, I can talk about cervical cancer. When a woman has cervical cancer, before they go for checkup, they may not be feeling pain. They start fe feeling pain after some time. So before that pain is felt, if a woman is using beings of relation method, she will have known that there is a problem. And then of course, she goes for medical care when it is still early, and then the problem is rectified. So it doesn't, uh, beings of relation method does not only help in uh, postponing pregnancy, it helps in achieving pregnancy, uh, especially to the subfertile couples, those couples who have spent over a year in the marriage, but they are not conceiving. You can be there, you are fertile, you go to the medical personnel, they check, they find everything is okay, but you are not conceiving. And then you ask yourself, what could be wrong? But with Billings of Relation Method, uh, you will be helped to conceive because with Billings, you will know um, that when you ovulate, in fact, I want to, um, to inform the participants that not every month a woman ovulates. So, so with Billings of Relation Method, we, we do intercourse, which is targeted. You, uh, you are targeted intercourse, I mean, the, the month where you are sure that ovulation has occurred, that is which will lead to conception. That is when a, a, a woman, especially this from a subfertile couple, is going to be helped to conceive. Um, if I'm not clear, I will entertain uh, questions because for the first time, you may be having issues uh, with some of the maybe um, what goes on. So I was still talking about menstruation. So the breeding is recognized as menstruation because ovulation had been identified through the recognition of a peak in the previous cycle. We are talking about cycles here. So if this, if this blood comes, but previously there was no ovulation, that one is not considered to be menstruation. We have four types of breeding. We have breakthrough breed, we have withdrawal breed, we have implantation and we have menstruation. So we, we want to talk about menstruation. The one which is preceded by a peak is the one that we call menstruation. So um, the rule that is applied during menstruation, what is it? The, the rule says, avoid intercourse during days of heavy breathing during menstruation. Why? Why should we avoid intercourse during menstruation? Because naturally, um, we used to think that the blood that comes is an egg that has burst. <laughs> uh, most women I have dealt with, that is what they used to think. Me, myself inclusive, before I, I studied about buildings, that's what I used to think. But surprisingly, <clears throat> um, an egg is, is smaller than a, 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 a pin, a pin. So that shows that the blood that we see is not um, the egg that we think of. The blood that we see, okay, you know, uh, a woman has got um, hormones. Maybe Dr. Sandra will explain more. She, she is a medical person here. Yeah? Um, each, each woman has got hormones and these hormones are responsible for each and every activity in a woman's cycle. So there is um, the ovarian hormones which help to prepare for the baby. During that time, um, towards, um, towards fertilization, I may say, the body is preparing to receive a baby. 
in the case there is intercourse during the right time. So in, in case there is no intercourse during the time a woman is going to conceive, what happens, the, the preparation which will have been made in the uterus, for example, the, the blood where this baby is going to be growing for the nine months, this blood has to be there. Okay, the lining of the uterus has to thicken and this is blood, of course. So when the time comes and then there is no conception, this blood has to get its way out of the uterus. So this blood that comes is the menstruation. It does not happen, it can't be menstruation in case there was no peak that's, 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 that happened in the previous cycle. So I wanted to talk about the reason why there, is, there should not be intercourse during days of heavy breathing during menstruation. Um, ovulation may occur quite early in the cycle and menstru menstrual breathing could secure the mucus. So what I, I talked about short cycles in the beginning. So a woman with a short cycle, uh, assuming her menstruation takes Assuming her menstruation takes four days, on the fifth day, she can ovulate. That, that is how serious it is for a woman with a short cycle. So in case she, she ovulates on the fifth day and she had intercourse during menstruation, that means this intercourse is going to result into pregnancy. I hope we are together. So, um, that uh, in, uh, menstruation is uh, demonstrated by a red stamp. A red stamp, it shows that this is menstruation. So after menstruation, we have got a, a phase which we call a basic infertile pattern. During the basic infertile pattern, some women are either dry. What, I, what do I mean by dryness? This dryness I'm talking about is uh, there is nothing felt and nothing seen at the vulva. The woman concerned does not feel anything at the vulva, neither does she see anything. So that means she is dry. In the case she has intercourse during that time, the sperm will die within two hours because there is no cervical mucus which keeps the sperm alive. Um, so I said we have two types of women. The one who is dry during BIP or basic infertile pattern, this period immediately after menstruation. Then we see a woman who has cervical mucus. But this cervical mucus has to remain the same day after day. What she sees today after monitoring herself is the same that she sees the next day. She has to record, remember we are recording. In fact, when a woman has started using the being's ovulation method, rule number one, she has to uh, abstain from sex for two good weeks because we want to be sure of her pattern of fertility or infertility. So uh, when if she has intercourse, that means she's not going to know what has come out. So she has to abstain in order to know her pattern, in order to know what is coming out. So, um, because I said women are different, I'm not going to say it is going to last for so and so days. To one woman, it can last for four days. Another one, it can, light, it can last for seven days. So it depends on a woman. Women are different. Even if someone is your sister, it is not a guarantee that your, your, your cycle is going to be like hers. Women are completely different. So I was saying that in the basic infertile pattern, you hear the word infertile, means that period is a woman can't conceive. But only when she is dry or she has an unchanging discharge, as um, we, now the difference with beatings to, to two day method for them, they are considering two days, but for us, we are considering a changing developing pattern. 
I mean, sorry, excuse me. For that, we are considering where there is no change. The discharge is the same day after day. It doesn't matter whether they are three days, whether they are four days, so long as the discharge is the same. That means that period is infertile. The same applies to dry. The one who is dry, that means dry is going to be seen today, tomorrow, the next day, like that, like that. I don't know how many days she's going to be dry, but so long as she is dry, that means she is infertile during that period. But uh, we are also talking about the women with long cycles. The women with long cycles, they can have both dry and an unchanging discharge. Both dry and unchanging discharge is possible, very possible for a woman with a long cycle. This one whose cycle is above 35 and above, it can go up to nine months depending on this, the, what this person, what has affected her. For example, if it is a breastfeeding woman, the one who is uh, totally breastfeeding, you know that fertility is suppressed, so it takes long for fertility to return. So the woman who has been uh, using post-chemical contraception, the one who has been using contraceptives, that one is also affected. Um, the ovulation is going to delay. Then the stress uh, woman, the one with the um, uh, ovarian, dis ovarian dysfunction. So all those things can affect the, the woman, the woman's cycle. Mm -hmm. mm. What else? So, period. Uh, before I go there, I want to talk about the rule for the basic infertile pattern. That is rule two. I said we have four rules. Three are the rules and the, the one which is the peak rule, the fourth one. Why do we call them three are the rules? Because it is before ovulation. Actually, in a cycle, the most important day is the ovulation. In a cycle, when there is no ovulation, that one, that cycle is as good as a dead, a dead one. So the most important day in a cycle is the ovulation day. I will talk about uh, how do you know that this is the ovulation day? We shall reach there. So we are still talking about the rule that we apply in the basic infertile pattern. This period, which is immediately after menstruation. The rule says alternate evenings are available for intercourse when these days have been recognized as infertile. What does it mean? Or what is the reason for this rule? Actually, somewhere, Dr. Sandra talked about it. If a woman is lying down, the fluid mucus that leaves the cervix is in the beginning of the fertile phase, pulls in the upper part of the vagina. When you are lying down, uh, the, the mucus which would have felt, which we would have been felt at the vulva, of course, it will remain there inside the woman. But when she wakes up and starts doing her normal activities, this discharge is, is going to be felt at the vulva. As you start doing your work in the morning when you wake up, that's when the discharge starts coming out. So it starts coming out by evening or by afternoon, it will, you, it will be felt at the vulva. But when a woman is lying down, the discharge will remain inside there. She can't even know that there is a discharge. So um, why we are saying that alternate evenings are available for intercourse? We are saying that if today she has intercourse, more, uh, remember in the BIP or in the basic infertile pattern, intercourse is only available in the evening. Having confirmed that there is no fertile discharge which came throughout this day. Evening, what is how it depends on how you um, you see your evening. But we normally say when a woman is before going to bed, that is her evening before going to bed. There she will have felt what came at the vulva. She will have recorded it, whether it is a fertile discharge, whether it is an infertile discharge. 
Of course, it depends on what she wants. If she wants to achieve pregnancy, it is different from the one who wants to postpone. So, um, so um, I was saying, if she is lying down, the mucus will be inside there. But when she wakes up and she starts doing her normal activities, this cervical mucus is going to be felt at the vulva. So, assuming she had intercourse this evening, and then remember she's lying down, the seminal fluid, I mean the mucus that this woman has, that she produces, plus the semen of the husband, it, 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 it mixes and it forms what we call seminal fluid. So this seminal fluid is going to remain in this woman throughout the night. And then in the morning when she wakes up, this seminal fluid is going to be coming out. It will come out throughout the day. So assuming that day there is fertile discharge that came, it will be obscured or it will be mixed up with this seminal fluid and you will not be able to differentiate. So that's why they say the day after intercourse is supposed to be uh, free of sex. You are not supposed to have intercourse the next day after you had intercourse this evening. I'm talking about the basic infertile pattern. Remember, we are talking about the basic infertile pattern. So um, the next day, of course, now that day is over. So the next day, she has to again observe herself from morning up to evening. If throughout the day, there was no fertile discharge that came, it means she is free to have her intercourse that evening. So the story continues like that, like that, until fertile discharge comes. So how does she now uh, differentiate that she is now out of the basic infertile pattern? In this period where she had dry, where she had uh, unchanging discharge, how does she know that she is now out of that period? When there is a change, a slight change, it means there is uh, uh, she has begun her fertile discharge. If she was, I'm now talking about an example of a woman who is dry. If she's no longer dry, she's now she, she, she has started feeling something. That means she has started a fertile phase. The same applies to this one who had an unchanging discharge. All of a sudden, she sees a change. It is no longer unchanging. It is now changing. That means she has begun uh, a fertile period. And this period, which is fertile, the discharge keeps changing, developing, and it ends in slippery sensation. Uh, for example, she may see a, a clear discharge today. Tomorrow, she will see another discharge, which is completely different. Maybe it is, um, it is um, maybe milky. Then another day, she will see another discharge, which is completely different from what she saw the previous days. Then it ends in a slippery sensation. She starts seeing slippery discharge. Hope you people understand when I talk about slippery discharge. The texture of the discharge is slippery. So I also don't know the number of uh, days this slippery discharge is going to take. It depends on a particular woman. Some, it can last for one day. Others, it can last for two days. If uh, a woman is in maybe in her 20s, you know, the peak of fertility is 24. Around there, the woman can have even five days of, of slippery. But the very last slippery day is when the ovulation happens. Ovulation. Hope you know ovulation. Ovulation is the day the egg comes, the egg appears on the ovulation day. The last slippery day is the ovulation day. But sometimes, on some, uh, sometimes ovulation doesn't occur on the last slippery day. Sometimes it happens on the next day. And on rare occasions, does it appear on the second day after peak? But remember, the, um, the period, um, the egg can, can survive for 12 to 24 hours. So assuming the egg came on this day, it means tomorrow it is still alive, it will be still alive. So if you 
the egg is present, maybe it came today, and you have uh, intercourse tomorrow, still the egg will be alive and you have to conceive. So as soon as the fertile period begins, if a woman wants to postpone pregnancy, she should not have intercourse because during this period, even if there is no penetration, a woman can easily conceive. Yes, those conditions happen. There is uh, the man just uh, puts the, 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 the sperms around the, the vagina, just when there is no penetration, it can result into conception, especially during this period when the egg is around during the ovulation period. So um, I wanted to talk about the, the survival time for the sperm. In case there is fertile discharge, the sperm can last for three to five days in fertile discharge. But when there is no fertile discharge, a sperm can only survive for two hours. So that's why they are saying, if a woman has started her fertile period, where the discharge is changing, changing, she is not supposed to have intercourse. If, if at all, she didn't want to conceive because she will not know. You can't know what is happening tomorrow. With beings, you take each day at a time. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. So you take each day at a time and then depending on what you want, whether you want to, to achieve, whether you want to postpone, then you make the right informed decision. Um, the rule for rule three, the one which we use when there is a change, it says avoid intercourse on any day of discharge or bleeding which interrupts the basic infertile pattern. If pick is identified, Sometimes during the basic pattern, there can be interruptions. There can be interruptions. Exception: a woman can either see blood, for the case of breakthrough bridge, um, or she can see a discharge. But this discharge, you have, she has to wait for three days. Where is this discharge leading to? It can either lead to peak where the, the, the ovulation is, or where ovulation occurs. Or it can take her back to, to, to basic infertile pattern. So if it if peak is not identified, that means this woman has gone back to basic infertile pattern. And there she has to apply rule two again. The rule two, which says alternate evenings are available for intercourse when these days have been recognized as infertile. This is the period where I said when she has sex this evening, the next day she will not have because the seminal fluid which comes is going to may mix with the fertile discharge and this woman may not know. That's why we are saying she has to alternate. So in the case peak is identified, she has to apply the peak rule. Peak rule, what does the peak rule say? Peak rule says that from the beginning of the fourth day, following the peak until the end of the cycle, intercourse is available every day at any time. So um, we, I was talking about the ovulation day. I said the ovulation day or the peak day it happens on the last day of slippery sensation. But sometimes the peak does, the ovulation doesn't happen on the peak day, which is the last sleeper day, but the next day. So if it happens the next day, it means that even the next day, it will, uh, the egg will still be alive. Because we are saying that the survival period of uh, an egg is 12 to 24 hours. But on rare occasions, the peak uh, ovulation happens on the second day, after peak, meaning that the third day, the egg will still be alive. So, but from the fourth morning after peak up to the next menstruation, intercourse is available at any time because 
the egg has already died. Since it takes 12 to 24 hours, the egg has already died and this woman can no longer conceive. That means the period for conceiving is over. <coughs> Excuse me. And if this cycle is a fertile one, from ovulation day to the next menstruation, this woman will count 11 to 16 days. If she counts 11 to 16 days, that means her cycle is a fertile one. But if it was less than 11, <coughs> it means that this, fat, this cycle was not fertile. Even if she had intercourse, she would not have conceived. Um, so we have rules for, post, uh, for achieving pregnancy and rules for postponing. So the rules for achieving pregnancy, you apply the RD rules. One, the rule uh, that, that tackles menstruation, where you, you should avoid intercourse during days of heavy breathing. Then rule two, which says alternate evenings are available for intercourse when these days have been recognized as infertile. And also rule three, which says, that avoid intercourse on any day of discharge or breeding, which interrupts the basic infertile pattern. Why? Why should, why should you apply the three RD rules? It in enables the change to the fertile pattern of mucus to be recognized. When then you postpone intercourse until slippery mucus occurs. This is for the achievement of pregnancy. You have to, to have intercourse during slippery days. <clears throat> you want to, if you want to be sure of the pregnancy, you have to wait for the slippery days and then you can resume intercourse. If you want to achieve pregnancy, the next few days are the most fertile. Therefore, intercourse should occur while the slippery mucus is obvious and for one or two days after the peak. Uh, and then for the postponement of pregnancy, you have to apply the early day rules and then the peak rule also is applied. The peak rule says, the peak rule says that from the beginning of the fourth day after peak until the end of the cycle, intercourse is available every day at any time. Yeah, that is when you want to postpone pregnancy because during that time, you cannot conceive. Um, what else can I talk about? Um, <clears throat> for a woman who has dry, dry as her basic infertile pattern, that means that is her, her, that is her pattern. That means even in the next coming cycles, that is what will happen. That will be her, her basic infertile pattern. That is the good thing with being the ovulation method. When you have already learned it, that then that means that it is your skill for your life lifetime. You can uh, use it on yourself. You can help others by teaching them because you will know what is happening. These are uh, it's, there's nothing new. Uh, everything that happened is is what we have been seeing as women. From Menak, eh? when uh, during that time when uh, a young girl begins her um, menstruation, of course she will be observing herself until menopause. So, uh, but before you, of course, you won't be knowing what is involved. What I can say is the presence of um, discharge is what uh, makes a woman to be fertile. Because as I said, even if there is ovulation, but when there is no presence of cervical mucus, it means that this woman cannot conceive. So I, I, I can say that fertility is the, is the cervical mucus. The cervical mucus is fertility. Without it, 
nothing can go on. Then I wanted to also add that there are some women, especially after the age of 35, where the fertility of a woman is declining. A woman can even finish three good months when she has not ovulated. So even if she's having intercourse during those months, she cannot conceive. But with the help of beings of no when she has ovulated, and this is the time that she's going to to you to, to, to have intercourse, which will result into pregnancy. So the women we have helped, the ones who have who had taken long <coughs> um, dreaming to, 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 to achieve pregnancy and it took them long. We have helped them to identify ovulation and then uh, they have the targeted intercourse and they, it has resulted into, into conception. At least 78% of the women that we have taught who, who, from subfertile couples, they have been able to achieve their dream of becoming pregnant. pregnant. Um, yeah. There are a lot to talk about, but I think if people have questions, I think we can welcome them and uh, maybe I will share my phone. Anyone who wants us to teach her, they can come to our office, which is located in, in Gayaza. We have a new office in Gayaza. This is where we are operating from. We have other programs. We have the Adopt Mom program where we help these young girls who become pregnant and then they feel they want to abort. We come in and help them by giving them support and then uh, they stop the, that bad thing of thinking about abortion. We help them to go back to school to achieve uh, a skill so that they are able to look after themselves and these babies. We have saved a lot of um, young babies. And uh, what else can I talk about? We have um, sexuality awareness programs in schools um, where we talk ab about uh, sexual awareness to the young children. Of course, we have age appropriate programs from age 10 up to university students. And Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you for giving me this chat. Uh, someone has been helped. In case of more detailed uh, teaching, you can contact me. I'm always available from Monday to Friday. And okay, someone is asking <laughs> how they can change the sex. Actually, this one is also possible, but in pro-life, in pro-life, we, we value every sex, but in the case of, um, <laughs> in the case someone is, is having difficulties, still we can help in that, but I don't know if I can uh, talk about it right now. I'm requesting that people call me in case they have questions, but this one of predetermining sex, is also possible with being the ovulation method. I'm available, please. Uh, uh, you can meet anywhere in office, anywhere, and then we talk about all this. Um, our services are free. Uh, we offer free services from the word go. You only come with your transport to and fro. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Mrs. Emily. This was so great. Thank you very much. And uh, um, I've, I've tried to copy some people's emails and um, I think people would like to get more notes and uh, we promise we are going to do everything possible before the second presentation. We'll try to make sure that uh, we send the notes to the emails you have provided. And maybe on our WhatsApp group, there'll be more sharing of the emails so that we can share these notes. 
We are very sorry we thought we would be sharing the notes as the presentation go on. I would like to call Dr. Sandra maybe to lead us in question and answer. Thank you, Brother Julius. Um, I want to first uh, comment on that on the some of the things I've seen in the chat, because people are sharing their experiences, how they are counting days. Uh, we are not going to generalize this counting of days. Uh, we started off natural family planning method started off with the rhythm method or the calendar method where they used to count days and the success rate was only 60%. That is why a senior gynecologist decided to find with the request of uh, the church to find more effective methods of natural family planning. And so uh, that the, the gynecologists have helped us to find the most significant sign of fertility in a woman is the cervical mucus and also the change of temperature and also the hormones. So the methods that we are recommending that we are sure have been studied over, over decades and that they have worked are the methods that we are going to recommend. So if you have a personal counting that you do, of course, especially people who have a relatively low fertility, you can risk counting. But if your fertility is very high, better to find the scientifically proved methods of family planning, which we are going to share during these three sessions that we, we hope to uh, undertake. So don't encourage others to count. For them, the first day, they, the first month they count, they will conceive and then they will blame you. Let better we use, uh, maybe we'll see the standard days method as Janet will talk about it, I think the next session that we'll have, which is for people who have regular cycles. But the others, please let us stick to the scientifically proven methods. Ministry of Health has already adopted the standard days method, which we'll do next session. Uh, it has proved lactation amenorrhea method, which we'll do next session. It has approved the two-day method and the Billings ovulation method as methods that they also trust as a ministry for us to take on. So if you have your personal methods, please keep them to yourself, but let us use the scientific for others. If they have worked for you, well and good, but don't encourage others, count seven days. We all have different cycles and we have uh, different uh, phases of, uh, of fertility. That's why, as you have seen from the two presentations today, we have not told you that count three days, then abstain for five, then count 10. We have not said anything like that because our cycles are always different and it is okay. We have a range of normal cycles. Thank you. Anybody else with a question? Hey, chat is on as well. Catherine, do you want to say something? Anybody with a question? I don't see any hand up. Brother, I just want to emphasize the fact that natural family planning methods depend on the user. If you've just had a word or two and you had to use it, it may not work for you. So try to go to the provider sit down with a provider and then uh, learn better how to use and ask your private questions. We always encourage uh, those who want to come for natural family planning to come with their spouses if possible. But if your spouse insists they can't, they will use the method, but they don't have the time to come for the classes, then it is okay, we teach the woman and we hope that there will be communication. As we have said, if there is no communication between the spouses, then it is difficult to use natural family planning. Planning. And yet, if you use natural family planning, it will definitely improve the communication within your marriage, and it will help you have a longer um, marriage life, longer and happier marriage life, because communication is key. Okay, I see Sister Rosa. Please unmute yourself, Sister Rosa Rukunga, and say something. 
Yes, I have a question. Yes. Uh, for those who are there, we have some patients who've been using, uh, or rather clients who've been using uh, contraceptives and they want to get back to natural family planning. For how long can one uh, be advised to stay before starting using the, I mean, after using uh, the contraceptives and beginning the natural family planning? Okay, thank you, sister. Um, Annette, I'll answer the questions together. Annette, unmute yourself and ask your question. Me, yeah, I'd like to ask about uh, they said for how long should someone avoid sex after the cerebellum mucus? The cerebellum mucus, the cerebellum mucus, when someone starts experiencing dry days. So, for how many days which are dry, someone avoid sex? Okay. Barbara, I think uh, Emily, you'll take Annette's question. After Barbara. Barbara, yes, unmute yourself, Barbara. Hello. 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 Ba sorry, it's Barbara. Sorry. Barbara, I see your hand up. Okay, if Barbara is not ready, Vanessa. Vanessa, I see your hand up. Is it by accident? No, no, I'm here. I'm here. Hello, yes. everyone. Hello, Vanessa. Um, <laughs> I uh, just wanted some help for mothers who have just uh, stopped breastfeeding and their menstrual cycle has begun. Is it safe to take the billing method rules like any other woman who has been having uh, cycles on a, a regular basis? Or is there a period to kind of watch and um, in, and indicate the discharge and know what is regular? I don't know if I'm clear. Yes, you are. Thank you, Vanessa. So I'll start by answering sister's question. Uh, sister, any woman who has been using contraceptives and wants to change to natural family planning, they can actually do so immediately. And the, the best methods for these women are either the Billings ovulation method or the two-day method. The other method which we'll do, which is standard days method, uh, if they are to choose that, which is the moon bead, then they have to first wait until they get regular cycles. But for the Billings ovulation and the two-day method, because they'll be checking for their secretions to, as a sign of fertility, those methods will work for them so they can shift immediately to these methods which check uh, cervical mucus. Uh, and then uh, Annette, uh, Emily will answer your question. Vanessa, uh, is it safe to take on Billings ovulation method after breastfeeding? Yes. The two-day method and the Billings ovulation methods are very good methods to transition in after breastfeeding. And of course, we are going to see the details of the breastfeeding method, how it works. It has conditions. Uh, but as we move from those conditions, which we'll see uh, next time, lactation amenorrhea method, then you can shift into the Billings ovulation or the two-day method again, because these methods check for cervical mucus. Just to note, as we wait uh, for us to go into detail of the lactation amenorrhea method, it can only work if you're exclusively breastfeeding, if your periods have not returned, and if the child is below six months. If any of this is not there, then you need to shift to another method. Because what happens sometimes is the women who are breastfeeding think they cannot conceive before their periods return. And then before they know it, they feel fetal movements. They feel a baby kicking in their tummies. So it's important for you to know that you can conceive even before your period returns. Emily, uh, kindly ask, answer Annette's question, how long to abstain after the slippery mucus? Because I think she was uh, asking in line with the Billings ovulation method. Emily? Uh, 
is Emily off? If she's off, brother, do you want to take that up? Brother Julius? Come again. Uh, Annette is asking how long you abstain after the slippery mucus in Billings ovulation okay, method. Okay, I was talking, okay. but it was refusing to, to unmute. Okay, now I can. I hope you, I'm being heard. Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, uh, after the last slippery day, she has to count three days. After the last slippery day, you count three days. Then from the fourth morning, from the fourth morning after the slippery to the next menstruation, she can have intercourse at any time. During that time, she cannot, she can no longer conceive because we believe the egg has already died. Okay, thank you. Barbara? Yes, doctor. Yes, um, please. Okay, my question is, um, I'm breastfeeding my baby is one year, but before before baby, my, my cycle used to be regular, now it's irregular. So I'm wondering, after the phase of breastfeeding, will my cycle become regular again, or I, I have to get used to the irregular? Okay, thank you, Barbara. And I see you're the only one who had a question. Yes, Barbara. Um, our cycles differ a lot from person to person and from um, a cycle to cycle. So yes, sometimes after breastfeeding, your cycle may be irregular for some time and I won't tell you for how long. It will depend on when your uh, hormones will become regular yet again. But most likely it will become regular again. But the good news is even with irregular cycle, you can still use the two methods of family planning that we have talked about. You just need to find your, um, your fertile phase of the cycle and abstain from sex during that time. I hope I'm clear. Uh, you can also answer this. There is someone in the book that is called Nelson Mushabe. He's asking, how do you differentiate between fertility mucus from others? I think from other sessions. Okay. And, and, and Annette, I see you have a hand up. Annette? Annette, was it by accident? Uh, 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 it's Emily who talked about. Emily, do you want to answer that question? Okay. One, first of all, Emily, before you, um, maybe I want to uh, explain. During my session, I talked about mucus that is not normal. We Sometimes we have abnormal mucus. And this abnormal mucus may be itchy, may be smelly, may stain your underwear, maybe brown, yellow, green. So if mucus is itchy, is smelly, is, uh, uh, that is an abnormal mucus, which needs to be treated. But then uh, Emily was the one explaining about the mucus. I'll let her go on because in the two-day method, we just said the normal mucus, is it there or is it not there? But in the Billings method, we can differentiate between the fertile mucus and the mucus which is not fertile because there are some people who uh, kind of uh, never dry. So Emily, I'm handing over to you. Unmute yourself, Emily. Emily, you're muted. Okay, but it's taking time. Okay, okay. the difference is an unchanging. When the mucus is not changing, that means it is infertile. But if it is changing, it is fertile. That is the only difference. Unchanging, infertile, changing, fertile. Okay. okay, thank you, Emily. And that unchanging mucus that we are talking about is usually kind of sticky. 
it's kind of sticky mucus, but then they're changing, it keeps changing until it's very uh, kind of watery, kind of egg-like, kind of slippery. So that one is a fertile mucus. Annette, your hand is up. Annette, unmute yourself. Okay, I wanted to ask about how do you differentiate from conjugal act mucus with that one of fatty mucus? Okay, so how do you differentiate uh, that one? Uh, again, Emily, you'll answer conjugal yeah. act mucus from fertility mucus. Now, then the maybe fertility mucus, the fertility mucus. You can be there, no one has touched you. You are doing your, your uh, usual activities. No one has touched you, no one has. You understand, if no one has touched you, I mean, uh, no, maybe no man has touched you, husband has not touched you, you are in your normal, normal senses. The mucus that will be coming is now the fertility mucus that we are talking about. You are just there, you are maybe cooking, you are washing, you are moving, you are, in, you are doing your normal activities. No one has touched you. You are not in love, in, in, in other words. That means the mucus that will be coming is the one that we are talking about, the fertility mucus. But now, when you go into, uh, by the time you go into to, to, to the bed, eh? by the time, you decide to have intercourse. That means you have observed yourself. Maybe the discharge that came is the infertile one in case you are, the, you are a woman who is postponing pregnancy. In case you observed yourself and that day, the fertility, the, the cervical mucus that came is a fertile one and you want to postpone, that means you are not supposed to go for intercourse. So uh, the only difference is nobody has touched you and then the mucus comes. That one is the one you consider as the fertility mucus. Yeah. If it is different, I mean, the one which keeps changing, remember you are, you are taking each day at a time. What you recorded yesterday, you, you, you jotted it down. Today you are observing yourself. By evening, you have concluded what came, you have put it down, then you are to compare. Is it changing or it is not changing? If it is changing, that one is the fertile one. If it is the same, that one is an infertile one. Okay, thank you. Brother Tadel. Yes, you are. Brother Tadel. Unmute yourself, brother. We can't hear you. Yes. Uh, uh, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So, thank you uh, for your presentation. Uh, I would like to know which one is all-inclusive method. Uh, because when we, we talk different methods, probably that can cause a confusion. Which one can include all? And, and if that is possible to emphasize, that is one. Uh, probably presentation from uh, Billings method for that one. I don't know whether I'm mistaken. I heard that a sperm can stay three to five days. I think that that needs also some justification. Three to five days, probably my, I'm, I'm mistaken. 72 hours is the last three days. Uh, uh, that is one of them. Then uh, breastfeeding the woman, when is she supposed to start charting and using method, natural family method, from when she is supposed to start? Another uh, question, I, I don't know whether I'm putting so many questions, but the additional question, uh, somebody asked the types of mucus. Is it, is it allowed? When uh, Emily tried to answer that uh, when the mucus is not slippery, not watery, it is a, in, that is infertile. Is that true? That one, I, 
I, I want to question. When there is a, if you are talking about a total, complete, uh, I mean, to be safer side, when, whenever there is a mucus, there is no need of intercourse for the couples which, who, couples who are try, uh, planning to postpone. And the, the last question, is it possible for the pregnancy to take place during ministerial period? If yes, what, where, when, why does it happen? In what kind of cycles that can happen? So I am asking you not just I don't know, but I'm, I'm asking you to, to help a more elaboration from the, the presenters so that others also get benefit. Brother, your Thank last you. question wasn't clear. What was Which your last one? question? The last question is that during the menstruation cycle. During that, menstruation, can someone conceive? Yeah, period. At that okay. time, is, is it, uh, the pregnancy, can it occur? Um, at what circumstance? If yes, what at what circumstance pregnancy can occur? That is related with the billings method. Thank you very much. OK, thank you, brother. Vanessa, unmute yourself, Vanessa. Vanessa, we can't hear you. Unmute yourself. Okay, maybe maybe Vanessa's hand just stayed up after the last question. Um, so I'll just answer the questions that uh, that brother asked. Um, Brother was asking if there's a method that can include all. Just like the artificial methods, there are so many. They are hormonal, but you can choose whether to have this hormonal method that stays for three months, the other one which stays for three years, seven years, five years. I think it is good and it is healthy for people to have a variety of methods to choose from. All we want is what is easy for this person this particular person and what works? Is this person eligible for this method? And do they find it easy? Then they choose because forcing people to just choose one method. Some people, for example, cannot bear to understand all the rules maybe of billings. Then they may go for the two-day method which has fewer rules. Then others can use the standard days method if their cycles are very regular and they prefer not to check themselves. So the more broad uh, we have, the better as long as they are more than 95% effective. It, they are good methods and it is good to have them. Then about the sperm, the, when the fertile mucus is present, because it reduces the, uh, it takes away the acidity in the woman's birth canal, which acidity would kill the sperm within one to two hours, then the sperm can survive for three to five days inside the woman when the fertile mucus is present. And this sperm and this fertile mucus is also an energy source for the sperm. And it also uh, makes, it, this, makes the sperm mobile so that it can reach the egg in the uh, fallopian tube. So in the presence of the fertile mucus, the sperm will live three to five days inside the woman. But when the fertile mucus is not there, then the sperm will die within one to two hours because of the acidity and also the fact that the birth canal is, the, the cervix is closed by the cervical mucus. Then for the breastfeeding woman, there's a transition from the uh, those who choose to use the lactation or amenorrhea method. And when one of the three conditions is no longer present, then the woman can shift to either the two-day method or the Billings ovulation method, and they start chatting. And then when brother says that there's no need of intercourse where there is any mucus, then that person is using the two-day method. But if you're using the Billings ovulation method, brother, there are some women who never have dry days. So it means you're telling them they have to abstain for life. And yet their vocation is marriage vocation. So for those women, especially, 
they can use the billings ovulation method. Of course, it will take them months to be able to identify and differentiate between the fertile mucus and the mucus which is not fertile. And when they identify the mucus which is not fertile after like three months of monitoring themselves, then they can use this time of uh, the infertile mucus to have intercourse because they are married and it is their right to do so, but they want to manage the, the, the number of children that they have. Then the women who have very short cycles, women who have very short cycles can conceive during the last days of their menstruation. So if your cycle is like three weeks, uh, the, now that's, that's when it comes in these people who say, may I count seven days? Then I count, you're counting seven days, but you could ovulate in those seven days. So the women who have very short cycles can actually conceive during their menstrual period, during the last days of their menstrual period. Thank you. I see we don't have any more hands up and it's already after six. So brother, I hand over to you to conclude the session. Thank you very much. All that have sacrificed their time to be here. And uh, this has been our first session. We are planning to have three we are planning to have two more sessions. Next session will be next Sunday, same time. And then we shall shout the link. And here we shall talk more about the standard days methods. We shall be able to talk more about the breastfeeding means as a way of natural family planning. I would just like to make more emphasis, which I might have missed in my presentation because of uh, the rain was too much. In fact, I wanted to share about that uh, when you're talking about the cycle, we have different types of cycles and uh, a short cycle would be someone of 18 to 25 days. An average cycle would be of 26 to 32 days. And the longer cycle, that's the one of 32 to 50 days. And also we've shared about the irregular cycles. In fact, uh, the presentation was so nice to, to explain to us the importance of a mucus, cervical mucus, when they're there because they're the one that enables transportation of the sperms to meet the egg. They're the one that offer nutrition and they filter. So without them, we really cannot conceive. So that was so, so beautiful. I thank in a special way, Dr. Nabachwa. Thanks very much for your time and thanks for loving this, this apostle. And thanks for the knowledge you've shared. And thanks Emily Media shared a phone number and um, I'll share it now. WhatsApp. She's part of our WhatsApp number for more communication. I shared about uh, Dr. Navachua where you can find her and Emmy said where you can find her. And uh, yes, we meet next time. So I would Brother like to Julius. conclude everything with that. Brother Julius. Yes. Brother Julius, there's an important question. There's an important question in the chat room on how to collect to check the mucus. I think we could have missed it out in the discussion. How should people check mucus? Okay. Um, in fact, we could say that uh, the mucus we're talking about, it can, be, it can be seen, it can be touched, it can be heard. When they're making the presentation, even the blind people, can use this method because they can hear this and they can touch. So how do you say that, how can you touch it? Some people can touch it by, the, by using their hands, by checking on the, the first cloth on their body, by checking on their knickers. It can be hard when you are doing your normal activities. So um, I, it can be checked when people are going to take a shower in their bathroom, in their toilets, can be someone can, can check for that. Now, how far should you check? It should be, she talked about it's at the valve. You don't really have to uh, insect yourself so, 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 so far. It is just at the valve. Unlike maybe when Dr. Nabachua would like to add something on that. Doctor? Yes, brother, I think you've been very clear. Please don't poke your fingers inside because they can cause you to have infection. So you just check down at the vulva. 
and the other things our brother has talked about, you can feel like we feel our period, you know, that I'm going into my, my menstrual uh, uh, period. And also, please, uh, we don't say safe days or danger days. When we are talking up about natural family planning, as I was sharing about the cycle, I said we have fertile days in fertile days and the menstrual phase because children are not a danger. So we are not supposed to be safe from children. Children are a gift from God and we love them. So avoid those words of danger days, safe days, no fertile days and infertile days. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to, to request Mr. Richard Kaketo to give us his final word and lead us in the closing prayer. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Julius. And thank you to all our participants who've been able to attend this session. Uh, it is long overdue. Natural family planning has been taking place from all these places that Brother listed at the beginning. But for some reason, when the adverts are taking place on television, the only adverts we are seeing are of the conventional contraceptives. Wouldn't it be a very good thing if the Ministry of Health actually invested some little money in advertising this very healthy and beautiful approach to fertility awareness? So thank you very much, brother. Thank you very much, Emily. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sandra and to all our participants. Now we will pray and close our session. In thanksgiving for the opportunity to convene at this session, the first of three sessions on natural family planning. In thanksgiving for the time and the gift of life we've been given to be part of this process. We pray then that people of God in Uganda, people of God in Africa, discover the beauty of the natural approaches to fertility regulation. That Africans increasingly understand that fertility is a gift. Pregnancy is not a disease. That childbearing is good so that in future, our children, our women, our families are, protect, are protected from the adversity of the pro-death movement, are protected from the adversity of contraception. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So let's meet next week, good people. Okay. Thank you very much.